Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Smash JT. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing storylines in video games. Recently, I was playing through Valkyrie Chronicles on the PC, and I realized there were a lot of gaps in that game as far as how the storyline worked, the flow of the game, and whether or not you're familiar with that game doesn't really matter, because I just want to touch on that storyline and what could have been better about it. What I really want to focus on in this video is bad writing, storylines that don't make sense, and storylines that drag on way too long. We've all been there. You start a game off and they just shove a storyline down your throat and then it continues throughout the entire game. There are tons and tons of examples of this and I'm not going to name each one of them individually. I'll be showing some clips of them here and there just to give you guys an idea of what I'm referring to. But even if you haven't played these games, you guys can think of some examples I'm sure on your own where you've played a game that was just way too much storyline and not enough gaming. But why is that? Oftentimes, even seasoned professionals in the writing field will look at a video game and make the same mistake every time thinking that the writing of the storyline exists independent of everything else going on in the game. When creating a game, most of them don't even start off with a fully made storyline. That's created as the game goes along in production. They don't have a script when they start it. It's very different than when you make a movie. The reason for that is the writers are constricted by how they can write about a game based off of what the developers are doing with said game. And in some tragic cases, this really shows through. While you're playing a game, if it starts you off in this story that you have no idea why you even should care about it, and it lasts for 20 minutes way too long before you even get to play the game, that should give you a good idea of what went on behind the scenes before that game was made. And this kind of thing really makes me look back at the good old days of gaming and say, man, I kind of wish these developers had less tools and assets to create a game so that a storyline could fit better with it and they wouldn't have to create all these graphics and cutscenes just to develop a storyline that typically a lot of people don't even care about because they don't find a reason to care about it in the first place. I'm a huge proponent of making storylines optional. It's a video game. These developers need to be reminded that they're making a video game. They're not making a movie. They're not writing a book. They're using a form of interactive entertainment to entertain someone and oftentimes it feels like they're forgetting about that because you'll be playing through a game and realize it's all a storyline there's very little action to this game that you're actually participating in there will be a game that comes out that you can't wait to play and you put it in the system and then sit through 10 minutes of cutscenes before you even get to actually picking up the controller and doing anything and this will be the first time in internet history you hear anyone say anything good about superman 64 at least that game lets you get right into playing. But storylines are the least of this game's problems. Which brings me to my next point. A story doesn't necessarily make a game succeed or not based off of if it's a good story or not. It's one of the contributing factors of it, but by no means is it the only reason the game is good. The storyline combines with all the other factors of a video game to create a narrative to make somebody feel like they're immersed in this world and enjoying their experience with it. And typically the biggest offender of storyline abuse is the role-playing game. They focus so much on telling a story that they often forget that the player wants to actually play the game. But I don't want to focus on just the negatives in this video, I want to talk about some positive examples as well. Chrono Trigger was one of the prime examples of how to do a storyline right, how to draw the player into the world and make them want to learn more about it. And like everything else, this all starts at the beginning. You don't want to overdo the storyline right when the game starts. The way Chrono Trigger starts out is you wake up from your bed from your mom opening your window shade and saying, hey, what a beautiful morning it is. Okay, let me go explore this world. What's going on? I want to see what I'm getting myself into. And then the game will slowly tell the story as it goes. And the slower it tells it to you, the more you're going to want to see what it's all about. Assuming that there's good gameplay to support the storyline. Another example of a game that does it right is Super Metroid. 
There's barely any storyline in that game whatsoever. It's all told right at the beginning. It's like two minutes long and that's it. There's no tutorial. There's very little storytelling throughout the game. Yet somehow that game creates a very eerie environment. Makes you feel like you're a part of that world and that you're actually Samus Aran on this other planet. And as I mentioned briefly at the beginning of this video, Valkyrie Chronicles does the storyline completely wrong. In my opinion. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people that are going to disagree with me and say that game's incredible. You need to just play through it and feel a part of that world. The problem with it was, even though there was a ton of optional storylines that you could select if you wanted to, a lot of them forced you to click on and read through and listen to the narrative. And you feel like you weren't even playing a game. After hours and hours of playing that game, I felt like it was 90% storytelling and 10% actual gameplay. The gameplay in that game was awesome. I had so much fun with the gameplay in Valkyrie Chronicles. But there was way too much storyline to actually even get engaged with the game and feel like I was a part of these characters' lives because I wasn't even playing as them. I was just reading the storyline and finding out what's happening with the war and how it's starting and how these people are a part of it. There comes a point when the storyline is just too much. And the best way to have a good storyline in a game is to start it off slowly with as little storytelling as possible. Remember Link to the Past on Super Nintendo where it tells like a 30 second storyline and then Link gets out of bed after his uncle leaves the room? And then a few minutes later you find your uncle dying in the castle that is a perfect storyline. It makes you want to know what's going on in the game. It doesn't slow it up because you're not consumed with this huge storyline. You just get to playing the game. And I truly feel like there are a ton of developers out there that could learn a thing or two by just watching these older games that were classics and seeing what they did right at the beginning of the game to draw the player into the world of the character. But anyways, those are my feelings on how storylines in video games should be told. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this. What are some good storyline games? What are some terrible storyline games? What games lost your attention because there was way too much storyline focus in it without drawing you into it at all? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one. Can you make it all about one thing, one thing, when there's so much used to be about?